Here's a quick tip for creating a rim light effect using Photoshop. Now this might be a good solution if your original shot doesn't have rim light, but now you'd like to use the subject with a new background that might suggest a rim light scenario. And this is a good trick for compositing, you know, merging different elements. You want to do it in a cohesive way, so you want to make sure that the lighting on each element makes sense when they're all combined in the final image. And this is one technique that you can use to do that. I'm going to show you a quick example with our model where we've already removed the background. You can do this by making a selection around the model, inverting that selection, and erasing the background. And here's what this layer looks like with no background. And here's just the background by itself. And when I combine them, they work pretty well together. Now I'm going to toggle on the quick mask mode. I'll select the brush and make sure I've got black color selected. I'm just going to paint over the areas that I want the rim light to appear over. And really, this is a temporary mask, so what I'm actually doing is painting a selection. The pink color is indicating the areas that I'm selecting. The only part of the selection that I'm concerned with is where it affects the model. Whatever's going on past the edge of the model doesn't matter because there are no pixels on the background on her layer. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm also getting these edges, and keep in mind that there'll probably be some cleanup work, so more precise mask editing is going to be done on the final mask once we get a better idea of what this is all going to look like when we put it all together. I'm going to make sure we're targeting the model layer here, and we'll toggle off the quick mask, and we'll see the result, which is our selection. Now that's what we've actually been doing with the paintbrush, is selecting these areas, not actually painting color. Again, make sure that you're targeting the model layer only. Now we're going to use the selection to mask our effect. We're using an exposure adjustment layer effect here, and we can access that using this button or with the menu. Go over here, select the exposure adjustment, and make sure this box is ticked so that it only affects the model layer. And we'll get the new adjustment layer as well as the mask, which is based on the selection that we've already made. Now this icon indicates that this effect is only going to work on the layer just below it, which is what we need. If you didn't get that little arrow, you can toggle that clipping option with this button in the adjustment layers properties panel. Okay, so now let's take a look at the effect and you can see that it gives us a rim light where we didn't have one before, and we can adjust the intensity of it by adjusting the exposure slider. I see some problem areas here, so I'm going to clean these up by actually painting and erasing part of the layer mask for this effect. And I'll use the brush and black color to add to the mask, and you can see where it starts to hide the effect where I'm painting over it. I can use white to take away from the mask and start adding the effect back in. But in a more controlled way because, see, now I can actually see it happening in the context of how the effect appears on the rest of the model. So I'm just going to go back and forth and clean up these areas. I use a larger brush here so I can get a softer edge and a lighter touch for this area. So you can see how the rest is about fine tuning and picking the intensity of the rim light effect to suit your background. Now here we've created a look that isn't really so much about the background, but it does suggest that a couple of rim lights were used for effect. But you can imagine how this effect would be useful, for example, if we pop the model in front of a background featuring a room with large windows or an outdoor scene. 